ever wondered why some people seem to have a gift for music? Have you ever wished that you could play by ear, sing in tune, improvise and jam? You're in the right place. Time to turn those wishes into reality. Welcome to the Musicality Podcast with your host, Christopher Sutton. Today we're going to be talking about why to record yourself during practice and how to make it easy and enjoyable. In my recent interview with Gerald Clickstein, we talked about overcoming performance anxiety and making your playing more musical. One technique he strongly recommended was to record yourself. We talked briefly in that episode about how to make it easy, since so many musicians hate the idea of recording themselves playing or singing. But I wanted to unpack it a bit more today because it's one of those techniques that can really accelerate your progress, but is easy to overlook or shy away from. So we're going to talk a bit about why you might want to record yourself, and then how to do it in terms of technology, and then what you can do to actually make it easy and not get caught up in mental negativity or anxiety when it comes to recording yourself or listening back. Let's start with the why. There are three major reasons to record yourself as a musician. And to be clear, we're not talking about going into a recording studio or a sound booth and doing a serious production quality recording. We're just talking about day-to-day -day recordings as part of how you practice and learn music. The first reason is, it lets you improve faster. You've probably had the experience of being in a music lesson with a teacher, and you play through something, and then they point out mistakes or opportunities to improve, which you had been totally oblivious to while practicing it at home. This is partly because they have more experience, but it's also a lot because they have objectivity to really hear you as you play. In fact, you'll find you can generally hear your own mistakes and figure out how to fix them, but you never have the opportunity because your brain is mostly occupied with playing, and so you can't pay careful enough attention to listening as well. It is really important to listen while you play, but that takes practice, and even once you're relaxed with the piece and you've practiced actively listening, there are still going to be things you overlook while in the moment of actually playing the music. Recording yourself allows you to stand in the teacher's position, and although you may not have their experience or their well-trained ears, I guarantee you'll be surprised by just how much you are able to hear and evaluate and correct by yourself. That means that you aren't dependent on an occasional in-person lesson with a teacher to get the benefits of this evaluation. You can do it yourself every day, and that means much faster progress. The second reason to record yourself is one which Gerald shared in our interview. He talked about how, to overcome performance anxiety, it's a good idea to gradually build up the pressure of performance, rather than diving in at the deep end. Recording offers you a way to practice performing. You can set everything up as if you were actually performing for an audience, play through your pieces as carefully as possible, with as much musicality as possible, but the only person listening will be yourself afterwards with the recording. As I'm sure you know, it's a very different thing to play music with the intention of practicing versus with the intention of it being a performance. And so, whether or not you ever intend to take to the stage, practicing performance is a valuable way to increase your musicality. Having only the recorder as your audience takes an awful lot of pressure off, but it still gives you a valuable step forwards towards performing in a confident and truly musical way. The third reason to record yourself is it lets you actually hear your progress. Don't just record yourself and discard the recordings. Keep them, although at the time you might think you never want to hear them again, and I'll talk more in a minute about that experience of disliking your own recordings. Actually, if you keep the recordings, they become an enormously powerful way to track your progress and enjoy the improvements you make. When you listen back after a few days, you'll have a bit more objectivity and perspective but when you listen back after a few months, you'll probably realize that A, you didn't sound as bad as you thought, but also B, you sound way better than you did a few months ago. That is a really good feeling, but it's one you tend to miss out on if you don't have the recordings, and you're relying on just your own fuzzy memory of how good you used to be. One of my coaching clients on the Musical U Platinum program recently experienced exactly this. He had been reluctant to record himself because he's very self-critical by nature, and he knew he'd be dissatisfied with the result. But gradually I persuaded him to, just for our ears. 
and he was telling me last week how he sat down and recorded a performance of one of the songs we've been working on together, and immediately afterwards, he thought it was rubbish. He was really not satisfied, and he thought he probably wouldn't even send me the recording. But he went out to do some errands, and when he got back a few hours later, and he listened to the recording, he decided actually it wasn't half bad. Just that bit of time passing, and the ability to listen to himself not in the moment while he was playing, but with his full, relaxed attention, let him hear the performance for what it really was. Now, if he hadn't recorded himself, he would have played through the piece, been dissatisfied, and spent the rest of the day probably a bit disappointed about his music playing. But because he did record himself, he actually finished up the day being pleasantly surprised at the progress he's made. And that was actually the more true and accurate judgment of his performance. So those are the three reasons to record yourself. You'll make faster progress, you become more confident and musical in your performing, and you get to see clearly how much progress you've made over time. Are you convinced it's worth giving it a try? I hope so. So let's talk about how to do it and how to make it easy. The most important thing I can tell you about how to record yourself practicing is it doesn't much matter. A lot of musicians get hung up on this, worrying about having the right microphone or a quiet enough environment or what software to use. The reality is it doesn't matter. As I said before, we're not aiming for studio quality sound here. You're recording for the sake of capturing a performance and allowing yourself to listen back. That means it just needs to be good enough to serve the three purposes we talked about, helping you analyze and improve your playing, giving you practice at performing, and showing you your progress over time. That doesn't require super great audio quality. You can go old school with a tape recorder or a video camera if you have one lying around. Most people these days, though, will just use their smartphone or a tablet. They all have some kind of video camera and audio recorder app built in. It might be called voice memos or voice recordings. Keep in mind that the camera doesn't have to be aimed at you. Even if all you can find is the video recording app, not an audio one, that will do to get you started, whether or not you want to be shown in the video. You can also record yourself on a computer. Most laptops have a built-in microphone, or you can use a webcam's microphone or a plug-in mic if you have one. There's a great free piece of software called Audacity that I would recommend, or again, you can use the apps that come with your computer. On Windows, that's normally called Sound Recorder, or on Mac, you can use GarageBand or QuickTime Player. Remember, most of what you'll be listening for would actually be perfectly audible on an old 1920s record, so your smartphone's recording capability is more than good enough. It is worth taking a couple of minutes to figure out where to best position your recording device so that the sound isn't too loud or too quiet on the recording, and you might want to listen back on headphones to hear a bit more detail than the speakers on a phone or a laptop will typically provide. But that's about all you need to worry about. Okay, so that's the technology side of how to record yourself. How do we make the emotional experience of recording yourself easy too? Well, there were two big tips which Gerald Clickstein shared in his interview. The first was, play something easy. Yes, recording can be a tool for improving the pieces you're working hardest on, pushing yourself to the limits of your ability. But remember that being comfortable recording yourself is a skill in itself, so start small. Record yourself playing things you're confident about, and then build up to the more challenging music. The second tip was really powerful. It was to not focus on the whole performance and judge how good or bad it was, but to instead pick one particular aspect that you're evaluating when you listen. For example, just focusing on rhythmic accuracy, or pitching, or how well you're shaping each phrase. Isolating one aspect like that makes it far easier to stay objective and avoid the kind of mental trash of worrying about being good enough. I think those two tips alone will transform your experience of recording yourself and listening back from something overwhelming and difficult into something quite relaxed and useful. One thing I would add is a reminder that you're under no obligation to let anybody else hear your recording. You might decide that you want to share it, but when you hit record, it's good to assume that you are going to be the only one hearing it. That takes a lot of pressure off. I'd also just like to mention that singers have a particular challenge when it comes to recording themselves, but I think we'll save that for a future episode. So let's recap. Recording yourself as part of your practice has three major benefits. Number one, you improve faster. 
Number two, you gain confidence and musicality in your performing. And number three, you can clearly hear the progress you make over time. The how-to of recording yourself is pretty simple. Whatever works. Tape recorder, smartphone, laptop or desktop, there will be a way to capture sound, save it and listen back. That's all you need. It's easy to get caught up in emotional anxiety when recording yourself and listening back. So just remember that you don't need to let anybody else hear the recording. Start out with music that you can play easily. And then listen with a particular objective in mind, one single aspect that you're trying to evaluate and improve. I hope this episode inspires you to give recording a try. I won't ask you to send your recordings in to me, but I would love to hear how you get on. Let me know by email to hello at musicalitypodcast.com. Or if you want a super easy way to make your first recording, why not send in an audio question or comment for the show? If you head to musicalitypodcast.com, you'll find a link there in the sidebar to where you can record a little clip that we might feature in a future episode. Thank you for listening to the Musicality Podcast. This episode has ended, but your musical journey continues. Head over to musicalitypodcast.com where you will find the links and resources mentioned in this episode, as well as bonus content exclusive for podcast listeners. That's musicalitypodcast.com.